Hello again. This is Replacement Theology Part 2. Um, you would probably do well to watch the first video because uh, I address how the uh, catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble is a biblical doctrine and that replacement theology takes away the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. And people who are replacement theology, I have not met one person who adheres to replacement theology who is dispensational nor believes in a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? And Roman Catholicism teaches what is called all millennialism, that the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, is for the church and not for the Jew. They take the Jew out of the equation. And when you take away the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble, you replace it with the church and you get into all kinds of errors. <clears throat> The church has not replaced Israel, and we are going to look quite in depth at the greatest proof and debunking of replacement theology that there is in Scripture, Romans chapter 11. So get your King James Bible. Yeah, I hope you're hungry. Got a lot of scripture we're going to go through. We are going to read the entire chapter of Romans chapter 11. So... Get your Bible. You see, I, I even got sticky notes to uh, to my scripture references. This is going to be a big one, boy, so hope you're hungry. Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> We're going to read all 36 verses, but we are going to go to and fro in several places in scripture. Okay? So... <clears throat> Lord, uh, please bless this reading of your word. Um, teach through me, Lord, Jesus, Father. Teach through me. Use this worthless, weak, inept, incapable vessel to strengthen the body of Christ of the truth of your word. And may they have ears to hear. But if anyone be ignorant, let them be ignorant. But may you, Lord, speak through this word to the hearers who may happen to hear this. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. <clears throat> Romans chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Right away hath God cast away his people. God forbid. Now those who adhere to replacement theology will take that right verse. It's like, no, God hasn't replaced, uh, no, God hasn't cast away his people, but the Jews have to join the church, right? Um, we're going to get into uh, other scriptures about this, but God has not cast away his people, hence the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Okay. So Paul right away is saying, God hasn't cast off his people. So you know. <clears throat> Verse 2. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God for Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. 
But what saith the answer of God unto him? Now he's making a reference to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18. We're not going to go there, but you can go there on your own time, okay? <clears throat> I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And see in this the Christian dispensation. By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? The election of grace doesn't mean what Mr. Calvin taught, that they are elected just without their choice in it. No, their election by grace, meaning that God has sent to them the gospel. Okay? Sent to them the gospel. 7,000 uh, reserved who have not bowed the knee to Baal. There are people uh, of the Jews who are going to believe the gospel, who are going to accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And the uh, 144,000 that are sealed in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're all Jews, by the way. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be by works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Now, the work he's referring to are the works of the law, the Mosaic law, the law of the Old Testament, the Levitical laws and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, he's talking about works. It's not works meet for repentance. He's referring to the works of the law. Okay. Verse 7, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now again, Calvin teaches that the election, meaning those people who are saved without their own choice or without their own will, you are elected because you are number one hearing the gospel. Okay? Anytime you hear the gospel and believe on the gospel that Christ died for sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay, you believe on that, that he died on that cross and shed his blood to pay for your sins, okay? You believe that. You are one of the elect. Because the election comes through what? <clears throat> grace because you look in verse 5 even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace okay for by grace are ye saved through faith election is the grace of god once you are once you are saved and born again you are of the elect do you get it okay it's not that kooky Calvin stuff where this person is saved without their uh, choice, you know, forced at gunpoint, which God doesn't point a gun at anyone's head to make them do anything, okay? Or someone is going to hell without their choice, God pointing a gun at their head that they're going to hell without any choice. That's hooey. That's baloney sandwiches, okay? That's not the election that he's talking about, okay? <clears throat> Verse 7 again, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Again, the election are those who are saved by grace through faith. Once you are saved and born again, okay, by grace are you saved? You are of the elect. Election is the grace of God. Okay? Grace is through faith. Okay? That's the election. Once you are saved and born again, you are the elect. Do you get it? That's very simple. 
Okay? Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the sum, spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David said, Let their table be a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. Look at verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the, the spirit of slumbers, slumber, excuse me, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear. Okay? In this one, I'm using my ribbon marker. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 29. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 29. I'm going to read two verses here. Okay? He's talking about his covenant with Israel, the nation of Israel, not the covenant that he made with Abraham, because the covenant of Abraham was made unto Abraham, to a man. This covenant is made unto a nation, which has conditions. The Abrahamic covenant, okay, was given unto a man without condition. This covenant was given unto a nation and there are conditions to it. See, dispensational. You have to be dispensational. Okay? But, Deuteronomy chapter 29, hold your place in Romans 11, look at verses 3 and 4. Okay? Read the context on your own time, I implore you to. Okay? But for the sake of this study, okay? Verses 3 and 4. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs, the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, and those great miracles. Yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. Okay? Go back now to Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> Verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. God will have all men to be saved. Okay, all men to be saved. But, according to verse 11, read that again. Let's read that again. Read it out loud while you're reading it. Okay? So it sinks in. Okay? Go ahead. Let's read this. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, Salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. See, the Jewish people are to see God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, living in us. For the Lord is that Spirit. And through our witness unto the Jewish people and to fellow Gentiles, they are to see their God living through us to make them jealous for the God that they think they are worshiping, but not according to the Spirit. Okay? That's a very simple principle to get. But one that is often looked over because of people who are adherents to replacement theology. And we'll take this kind this text. Romans 11, and purposely twist it and try to put the church in here. Even guys like Mr. Anderson, well, he's got videos where he says that it actually is talking about the church. Israel means the church. No, 
Israel means Jacob. Israel means Jacob. Jacob means Israel. Okay. Jacob, the name means supplanter. Israel means prince with God. But he was Jacob and he became Israel. Get it? Get it? Okay. But now, look at verse 12 very quick. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Okay. But look back now at verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Look up in Romans chapter 10, okay, at verse 19 now. Romans chapter 10, just go up. Verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses, Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. Okay? Hold your place here. Okay? Go to Deuteronomy again, chapter 32. Okay? This is what Paul's talking about. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32, we're going to be reading from verses 15 on to verse 22. Go there. Keep your place in Romans 11. I'm cheating. I'm using my bookmark. But hold your place there. You, you need to see this. Go there. I know you're going there, brother. I love that. That's good. It's a good sign. Okay. We compare scripture with scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 15 on to verse 22. But Jeshurun waxed fat. Jeshurun, uh, well endowed, well favored. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock, capital R, do you see that? You see that? Capital R, the rock of his salvation. And what is the foundation that no other man can lay? Jesus Christ. Not Peter. Okay, not Peter. The foundation of the church is Jesus Christ. Not your fictitious Pope Peter. Okay? The rock of their salvation, of the rock of his salvation, Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's keep reading. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. God is a jealous God. He wants our full attention. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. For instruction and in righteousness, how does this apply for instruction and in righteousness? How does this apply today? Think about that with all these weird quasi belief systems out there, huh? They're just worshiping devils, of course, but for instruction and in righteousness, think about it. Verse 18, of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. That rock is Jesus Christ. Here in the Torah, the first five books, and when I say Torah, that's the Hebrew term for the first five books. But you got to be careful because when some of the Hasidic rabbis refer to Torah, Okay, and some of the other um, Bible-believing Christians jump on this. When I say Torah, I'm referring to the actual five books. But see, when the Hasidic Jews and the rabbis refer to Torah, they're not just referring to the first five books. They're referring to the whole, the whole thing of the Old Testament, including the Talmud. The Talmud. 
And there are two types of the Talmud. There's the Jerusalem Talmud and the Babylonian Talmud. And in the Talmud, they talk about how Jesus is in hell in boiling excrement. Fact check that. But see, when the Hasidic Jews would say Torah, they're referring to the five books, yes, but the whole test, uh, the whole Old Testament, the rabbinic rabbinic writings, and the Talmud. Okay, that you need to be aware of, saints. When you hear me say Torah, I'm referring to the five books of Moses. And you, I'm not a Hebrew's roots. Thank you. Thank you very little. Okay, I'm a Gentile, by the way. I'm against the Hebrew roots. Okay? So just, anyway, let's continue. Sorry for that rapid trail. <clears throat> Verse 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that, framed, that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Abhor means extreme hate. Not extreme displeasure, extreme hatred. Oh. You mean God gets angry? Uh, yeah, you think? What do you think the time of Jacob's trouble is? It's a time of purification, like what Roman Catholicism teaches. <coughs> That's a lie. Seven years of God's wrath on earth, and yeah, and those of you who reject the time of uh, the catching away of the time before the time of Jacob's trouble, you think that's purification? You're sick in your head. I love you, but you're sick in your head. Anyway, <clears throat> because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters, verse twenty, and he said, "I will hide my face from them." I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Now, notice a singular foolish nation. And over here you say, to jealousy with those which are not a people. Some will take this and say, it was the Assyrians, a nation. Others will say, it was the um, Babylonians. Some will say, it was the Germans. Some say it's the Romans. Okay? A foolish nation. What is that foolish nation? And a people which are not a people. All day long have I stretched out my hands to a disobedient and gainsaying people. But then again he says, I am sought of them that sought not after me. I am found of those who looked for me not. I just kind of paraphrased that. This, I believe, is a reference that God would give, eventually, the gospel. It's not it will give salvation unto the Gentiles because they blew it. Okay, this is not doctrinally for us today here in Deuteronomy, okay? I'm not saying that. But that foolish nation and the people and those which are not a people, those who are outside the covenant of what is being given here, okay? And a foolish nation, singular. A foolish nation. Okay? Today... In this the Christian dispensation, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond, slave, or free. Okay? God is a God of distinction. Live with it. 
God is a God of distinction. Some of you don't want to hear that, but that's Bible. Deal with the scriptures. God is a God of distinction. Today, salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let me hear that one. I'm sorry for doing that. That was bad. But sorry, forgive me for doing that. That was bad. But we are all one today in this dispensation in Christ Jesus. Okay? We are. But look at this. Those which are not a people, Gentiles. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Scripturally speaking, what is a fool? The fool hath said in his heart that there is no God. Okay? Us Gentiles weren't originally seeking after the true God. Okay, do you get it? Now, was he specifically speaking about a specific nation? I'll be honest with you, I don't really know. Okay? I don't really know. But... I believe that this is a reference to giving the Gentiles, that he would use the Gentiles, those who were not of Israel, to make them jealous. See, that's what I believe, and I'm going to stick to that. If you can prove me otherwise about what this nation is, please do so. I, I will change if you can prove it to me through the book. Okay? Let's continue. Watch this. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Now, there was a man, um, the late Art Katz, who was a charismatic Jewish man, who I kind of do think he was actually saved totally had some really weird heretical beliefs. He actually believed he was an Old Testament prophet. He was a charismatic. He was not he was not dispensational, okay? He was trained at Berkeley and went to a Lutheran seminary. The guy had all kinds of issues. But the guy at least had the time of Jacob's trouble, right? but he believed that the church would go in through there. I brought that man up for one purpose, because he believed that the foolish nation was Nazi Germany. And then when you read verse 22, a fire is kindled in mine anger as making reference to the ovens in the Holocaust. I have spoken with the, uh, of this with the Jewish people before. They don't like that. This right here is why I believe that the Nazi Holocaust, horrific as it was, was a judgment similar to what Nebuchadnezzar did. I do. I do. But anyway. But let's go back now to Romans chapter 11, verse 13. For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles, where Peter was the apostle unto the Jews. He's not the Pope. He never was. Okay? Peter, unto the Jewish people, preached Paul's gospel. They settled that in Acts 15. Okay? Okay? They were all preaching Paul's gospel. Okay? Because the full gospel was revealed to Paul. You, 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 just, you just wait about that. Okay? Let's continue. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them? 
but life from the dead. Hold your place here. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. I had these written in the note. My, I don't have notes in this because I wrote them down in my Bible. I did this the old-fashioned way and got the references myself. Okay? Isaiah 42. Okay? Look at verse 15 again. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, that the salvation has come unto us, the Gentiles, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Okay? Hold your place here. Isaiah 42. Okay? Isaiah 42. We're going to read verses 1 on to 9, then we're going to skip 10 through 12, and then we're going to read 13 on to verse 21. Okay? We're, we're skipping verse uh, 10 for 12 because it's not too pertinent to what we're looking at at the moment. If you want to read it on your own time, go right ahead. Okay? Go right ahead. But let's read. Isaiah 42, verses 1 under verse 9. I know you're there. God bless you, brother. Okay. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect. Remember, this is a different dispensation. Doctrinally, this does not apply to us. Okay? Doctrinally, Romans 11 applies to us because he is telling us Gentiles his plight and the whole purpose of us Gentiles coming into the tree of the Jew in order to provoke the Jew to jealousy. God would have all men to be saved. Amen, amen, amen. Okay? But this is written for us in the Pauline epistles. This is Christian dispensation doctrine. But right back here when it says mine elect, it's the Jews. He's referring to different dispensation. Get it? This is Old Testament. Totally different dispensation under the law. Okay? It's important to note that. You got to rightly divide this book. You have to rightly divide this book or you're going to make a trash heap out of it. And God's going to be ashamed of you. Okay? So let's continue. Behold my servant whom I, uh, whom I uphold mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Ooh, who do you think he's talking to about there? He's not talking about Paul, for goodness sakes. Let's keep reading. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment on the truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. I'll, I'll give you 50 guesses on whom he's speaking about. Come on, you know who, who he's talking about there, don't you? Jesus Christ. God manifested. God manifest in the flesh. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? That's who he's talking about. That's a reference to the Lord. Let's continue. Verses 5 under verse 9 now. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant to the people, for a light of the Gentiles. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Now verse 7, you can kind of, maybe, he's talking about spiritual blindness, or about how Christ went down into the earth and called the people out of Abraham's bosom and took them up because heaven wasn't open because the blood of God was not shed yet to make 
payment for sin, because the blood of bulls and goats could only cover sin, where the blood of God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, his blood on the cross, paid for it, see? And then when Christ went down into the depths of hell and got those guys out from Abraham's bosom, brought them up to heaven, okay? Christ descended down there to get the guys who were in that little holding area called Abraham's bosom, okay? Because the way to heaven was not open then until God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, paid for our sins on the cross by shedding his blood and paying for our sins, okay? And being buried and rose again the third day, okay? He paid for our sins on the cross. And that blood paid for sins so the people could come up, can be brought up out of Abraham's bosom, okay? You can kind of get that in there, okay? You can. I'm not going to argue. Um, I'm not going to argue that with you. I'm just throwing that out there with you. Okay. This is not our doctrine for us today. And today, okay. This is for instruction and in righteousness, anyway. Okay. But like I said, is that referring to spiritual blindness? It could to open the eye, the blind eyes, people who couldn't see the truth, to bring out the prisoners from prison and them that sit in darkness. Out of the prison house? Just saying, okay? I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Now, skip verses 10 through 12 and go to verse 13, and we're going to read to verse 21, okay? Now, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their, their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Interesting. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. Hold your place here. Go back to Romans 11. Okay? Look at verse 12 in Romans 11. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Okay? Now go over here. Back to uh, verse 13. Under verse 15, For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I provoke, I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Go back. Now to Isaiah 42, verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Okay? This is a different dispensation. Okay? I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. Okay? They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images, that say to the molten images, Ye are our gods. Watch this. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf, 
as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seen many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. It's talking about the judgment of God. And also a reference to Jesus Christ. Now go back to Romans 11. Okay? Because you see, they shall turn, be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images, that say to the molten images, Ye are gods. Verse 16, And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Look at verse 15 now in Romans 11. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Okay? Now, Verse 16, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. Hold your place here again. Go to Isaiah 49. Okay? Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Verses 13 on the 15, Isaiah 49. Okay, let's read again. Verse 15 and 16 now. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Okay. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy, and the root, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay, check this out. Now we saw in Isaiah 42, God's wrath upon his people. And we see and we have seen that salvation has come to us, the Gentile, to make the Jew jealous. Okay? We're not replacing them. Check this out. Verse 13 on to verse, well, we'll read 16 in Isaiah chapter 49. Hold your place there. And in Romans 11. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. Uh, Isaiah 49, verses 13, on to verse 16. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. It's talking about the church, Brad. Shut up. I love you. Shut up. But Zion said, okay, this is another dispensation. Christ hadn't died on the cross yet. Okay? Okay? You get it? But Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. Are you looking at that? Brother, sister, are you looking at that? Yet will I not forget thee. I, yet will I not forget thee. That looks like a promise, doesn't it? Wait, one more verse. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Interesting, it says, I have engraven you, graven thee upon the palm of my palms of my hands. And as I've addressed before to you, there are some that say that Jesus was crucified through the wrists. When 
And even even the Catholic Bibles, it's the hands. It's the hands. It's very significant. It's not a infinitesimal little thing. It's the hands. Christ was crucified through the hands, not the wrists. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. So when you see pictures of a guy playing Jesus in some stupid movie or drawings where it's through the wrists, that's not biblically accurate. Just so you know. Okay? God's not going to forget his people. Let's go back. Okay? Now, verse 17. And if some of the branches were broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, which people who are replacement theology do. They say that the time of Jacob's trouble is for the church. Okay? They're boasting against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Look up at verse 17, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Hmm. What's that root? Hmm? I'll let you figure that one out. <laughs> right here. Here's a little glimpse of pride. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Okay? Be not high-minded, but fear. They were broken off because of unbelief. And as it says here in verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Okay? So, Right there, when you look at verse 19, thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, being not high-minded, but fear. Look up at verse 18 again. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Do you get it? Not your head. Okay. Verse 21. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed lest he spare not thee, us Gentiles. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Now, what does this mean, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off? I don't know. I believe in eternal security. Absolutely, I defend eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Um, personally, and I, I'm not doing doctrine on this one for right now, for this second, for the statement, so bear with me. I personally believe that if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise also thou shalt, also shalt be cut off. I believe that if you continue or if you are a replacement theology, if you fall into, thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. 
Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. If you are an enemy of the Jewish people and teach replacement theology and hate them, you're going to be in big trouble with the Lord. I'm not saying that this is saying that you're lose, going to lose your salvation. Um, uh, but uh, even Brian Denlinger um, doesn't know what to do with if thou continuest in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. He doesn't know what that means, and you know what? I, I don't really know what that means. Just so you know. I'm honest. Okay? You come up with a good idea or figure it out through Scripture, you let me know. Okay? But now, hold your place here and go to Ephesians chapter 3. Okay? Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast... Thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For God spared not the natural branches. For if God spared not the na uh, natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, on them which fell, severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 1 through 13. Go there. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 13. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of this promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Look at verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. For by grace I you... Hold your place here. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, by grace are ye saved. By grace are ye saved. Through faith. By grace are ye saved. God's unmerited favor. Through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. This, the gospel for today, was revealed unto Paul. This whole chapter is Paul telling you that Christ revealed to him the gospel that you and I preach today, that you and I live by today, that you and I are saved by today. Okay? Okay? Let's keep reading. Verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, 
that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Note that verse. Hid in God, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. You will hear that in the Garden of Eden, they were looking forward to the cross of Christ. You will hear people say, non-dispensational people, by the way, will say that in the Old Testament, they were saved by looking forward to Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That's hooey. Because when Christ told the apostles that he was going to die on the cross and told them the gist of it, they didn't believe it either. They didn't believe it either. They didn't. It's like, what are you talking about? Okay. So when someone says that they were looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament, that they were saved the same way in the Old Testament by what Christ did on the cross in the Old Testament at that time in that dispensation, reject them because it says right here, in verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Rightly dividing the word of truth, you see that in different dispensations, salvation is different. How were they saved in the Garden of Eden? Hmm? How were they saved after the Garden of Eden? The time of Abraham. How were they saved under the law? How are we saved today? How are you going to be saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? How are you going to be saved in the millennium? Hmm? By grace through faith? Through the whole thing? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Go ahead and call me a heretic. If you believe that, you are not following the command to study to shew thyself approved unto God. Oh, rightly dividing, uh, that you to be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Excuse me for stumbling. Getting kind of tired. This is past my bedtime, just so you know. <laughs> okay. Verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. So this shows us that the gospel was specifically revealed on Paul. Okay? Go back now to Romans 11. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, for them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Now see, today, in this, the Christian dispensation, 
a Jew can be saved because if they abide not still in unbelief, rejecting their Messiah. Okay? Rejecting their Messiah. If a Jew repents of his pride, his self-righteousness, and I stick to that. I am stubborn on that one. Okay? But if a Jew come to the Lord in repentance, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ, if a Jew believes on the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel, that Christ died for sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, if they believe that and believe on the man Jesus Christ, they'll be saved today in this Christian dispensation, apart from the law. Okay? That's what that means. A Jew, yes, can be brought into the church, the body of Christ today. Yes. Yes. Amen. Okay? That doesn't mean at all that they have been replaced by the church. Are you getting the gist of what we're looking at already for the love of, oh, you know? Let's keep reading. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature, salvation is something to choose into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? What they were supposed to primarily have came to us to make them jealous. Okay? We... For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature, salvation is of the Jews, into a good olive tree, the tree of the Jew, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, those who are through unbelief are not part of it right now, be grafted into their own olive tree? by the gospel that Paul preaches today in this, the Christian dispensation. That's why we read Ephesians chapter 3. Okay? You get it? Let's continue. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Oh boy! That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And if you watched the previous uh, video, the Catholics talk about this as if it had already happened. Okay? And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Addressing who? Us Gentiles. This is for the Gentiles. The book of Romans is written unto the body of Christ. For this the Christian dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? This is doctrine for today. This is not for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Not at all. This is for us today. Okay? As concerning the Gospels, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Hold your place here. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. We're almost done. We're going to be reading verses 9 on to verse 15. And then we're going to finish out the chapter. We're going to skip verses 16 and 18. Read them on your own time if you want. And then we're going to read 19 through 21. Okay? 
Isaiah 59, verses 9 on to 15. Go there. I know you did. Therefore is judgment, beginning at verse 9, Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. Okay, this is talking about separation from God, how the Jews are separated from the Lord. Okay, this is under the law. This is a different dispensation. Okay, let's continue. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and more mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them not. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw, and it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Hold your place here. For I would not, brethren, go back to Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened unto Israel, has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, and as, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are the beloved. They are beloved for the Father's sakes. Go back there to Isaiah fifty-nine. Okay. Now we're going to read verses nineteen on to verse twenty-one. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth, or forever, and forever. Verse 26 in Romans 11, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. And I asked a question in a video, or an older video, Christian, do you really think that the Jew is jealous 
of what he sees, what she sees going on in the body of Christ? Hmm? Think about all the nitpicking and finger pointing and calling people out and name calling and all this stuff and all these divisions. And I, I'm not promoting ecumenicalism, please, but I'm just saying. Do you think we are making the Jew jealous? Those of us who are truly saved and born again, yes, yes, I've seen it, boy. Like I've said to you before, I've brought this to the Jew. I have, and I've seen that jealousy, even in saved Jewish people who refer, you Gentiles, you, know, you Gentiles, they also call us Goyim, <laughs> okay? Even so, these also, even so have these also not now, eh, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Look at verse 1 again. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. God forbid. Look at verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Paul is addressing Gentile believers in this about the Jewish people. Okay? This is Christian dispensation doctrine. This is written for us today. Okay? Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. As you see here, verse 18, Boast not against the, the branches, but if thou boast, Thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Okay? Thou wilt say, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Okay? We were grafted into the tree of Israel. The Jew. Okay? Salvation is of the Jews. God has not cast off his people. This dispensation is temporary. The church has not replaced Israel. The church is there to make Israel jealous. The church is here so that all men may be saved, might be saved. The church is the people, not the building. Which building ye are? The people, not the buildings. Okay? And by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Okay? Church has not replaced Israel. See, replacement theology is very dangerous. Roman Catholicism promotes it heavily. They are the big ones that do it. Many false prophets on YouTube adhere to it. 
a replacement theology practitioner, we will say, um, denies a pre-tribulation rapture, are non-dispensational, and sooner or later, because they believe that the time of Jacob's trouble is for the church, eventually they're going to be preaching works to be saved. Okay? Replacement theology is satanic and of the devil. Plain as day. If you get nothing out of these videos, please at least understand that replacement theology is not founded upon scripture. It's satanic. Okay? We have not replaced the Jew. The Jew is still the apple of God's eye. That's the time that's the cause for the time of Jacob's trouble. And we as King James Bible believing Christians need to remember that. And not just give lip service to it. Because as as I've said, I don't care where you live, I don't care where you're at in the world, somewhere by you, a Jew has seen you. You have come in contact with Jews before. I remember this uh, elder of the body of Christ said, I don't think I've ever met a Jew before. It's like, brother, come on, man. <laughs> yes, you have. You just probably don't know it. And see... The time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, is going to make the Nazi Holocaust look like nothing. And there are Satanists out there who try to tell you that's for the purification of the church. <clears throat> oh, wow. This is way past my bedtime. Um... I don't know if you're going to get anything out of these. I hope you do. I think you will, Lord willing. Um, this took a lot to do. A lot of stuff to look up. Sorry if I stumbled over my tongue and stuff like that. You know, I'm not... I am the least of all saints. Okay? I hope you watch these videos. Um, you have questions... Uh, if you want to, now I'm not going to debate you in comments because what does that profit, you know? But uh, anyway, anyway, I just hope uh, I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you. Replacement theology is satanic, and mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism pushes it. Okay? I gotta go to work tomorrow. And this is past my bedtime. I don't know if I'm gonna upload these tonight because this will take a while. This is over two hours of work. So, I have no idea when my next video is gonna be. I have no idea what it's gonna be about. That's in his hands. I love you guys. You have yourselves a really good night. Okay?